We'll see what happens when there are price controls, uh, that is when there's price ceilings or price floors and the dead weight loss that emerges. Under specific conditions, perfectly competitive markets can give rise to efficient outcomes, that is outcomes where maximum surplus is achieved. Now, while efficiency is important, society might also care about equity issues and might want the government to intervene in certain markets because of inequitable outcomes. Price controls are legal restrictions on how high or low a market price can be. And there are two types of price controls. Price ceilings set a maximum price that sellers are allowed to charge for a good or service. For it to be binding, it's usually going to be below the equilibrium price. In other words, the government is saying that the equilibrium price is illegal and some other price is the highest price that can be charged in the market. Price floors are the opposite. Price floors are the minimum price that buyers are required to pay for a good or service according to the law. For them to be binding, they have to be set above equilibrium meaning that the government tells the market that the equilibrium price is too low, they're not allowed to charge it, and the lowest price that they can charge is something above that. So here we can see the supply and demand curves for three-ply face masks in Malaysia. Now, the Malaysian government instituted a price ceiling in this market, saying that people couldn't charge more than 70 sen, that's the equivalent of cents for the Malaysian currency, the ringgit, that people couldn't charge more than 70 sen to sell a face mask. Now, this market would have cleared at an equilibrium price of one ringgit and 30 sen, at which 26 million face masks would have been bought and sold. But because the government has set a maximum legal price that's below that, the equilibrium is no longer legal. The invisible hand is going to push the market as close as it can get to equilibrium while still legal. That means that the price that's going to be charged in this market is the 70 cent price ceiling that the government instituted. At the 70 cent price ceiling, we can see that 28 million masks are demanded, but only 24 million masks are supplied. This means that there is a shortage of 4 million masks. So as I mentioned before, if the price ceiling was above equilibrium, it wouldn't be binding because equilibrium would be legal and invisible hand forces are gonna push us to equilibrium when it's possible. So in other words, if the government came along and said, you could not charge a price above one ringgit 50 sen for face masks, the market wouldn't really react to that because the equilibrium was already at a price that was below that. Equilibrium was legal, so the price ceiling wouldn't be binding. So as we've just seen, when prices are held below the market price, shortages are created. The lower the controlled price relative to the market equilibrium price, the larger the shortage. As a result, we'll see that there's what's called dead weight loss that comes about because of this price ceiling. This is the loss in total surplus that occurs whenever an action or a policy reduces the quantity transacted below the efficient market equilibrium quantity. That is, from the perspective of the market, not enough of this good is being bought and sold. On the supply and demand curves, we can see that there are people who are willing to pay more to get a face mask than sellers want in order to sell them, but that because of this price ceiling, those buyers and sellers are excluded from the market. This area, the lost total surplus that comes about as a result of the price ceiling, is the shaded area between the demand curve and the supply curve and between the quantity that's actually bought and sold in this market of 24 million and what would have been the equilibrium if the market were allowed to achieve it of 26 million. So this triangle of foregone surplus is called dead weight loss. So let's see if consumers won or lost as a result of the imposition of the price ceiling. The answer is there's a mixture of both. 
There are consumers that would have bought the good had there not been a price ceiling, but now are not able to buy the good because fewer units are being supplied. These consumers lost out as a result of the price ceiling. For the consumers who did get to buy the face masks, they got to do so at a lower price than they would have in the absence of a price ceiling. So those consumers benefited from the existence of a price ceiling. Instead of paying one ringgit 30 sen, they now pay 70 sen, so their consumer surplus increases. For producers, it's more of an unequivocal loss. Some producers are excluded from the market now because there's a lower quantity being supplied. And for the existing producers, the price that they're getting is lower than it would have been in the absence of the price ceiling. So their producer surplus is reduced. In net, total surplus has reduced in the case of the price ceiling compared to the absence of a price ceiling. And we can visually see that from the existence of the deadweight loss triangle. So there's an inefficiency that's generated from the existence of the price ceiling. Even though the government probably imposed the price ceiling in order to make masks available to people who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford them, what ends up happening is that fewer masks are produced and sold, so there's a more limited number of masks available, and the people with the highest willingness to pay are still the people who end up purchasing it. So it's not necessarily going to be bought up by the people who couldn't afford the price in the absence of the price ceiling. There is no reason why everyone shouldn't have access to the very best education. Welcome to Calculus One. To introduction to astronomy. The introduction to philosophy. To statistics. Microeconomics. Psychology. Let's get started. <laughs>